are muted. And because we have uh, a lot of participants, uh, all the noise at, at the same time. And so this will be webinar style. So you'll be able to, to hear um, and see Stephanie. Um, I'll pipe in when we have questions. So when you have questions, please use the Q&A feature. Um, the Q&A feature, if you mouse over the bottom of your Zoom, you'll see the Q&A down there. Um, so just use the Q&A feature to ask any questions. And Stephanie, I'll just kind of bump in as, as we go. This is live and want to be able to address questions as they come in. Um, and sorry, now with that being said, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll turn the time over to you for the remainder. No, that's perfect. It, it's always good to kind of establish those uh, housekeeping rules up front. So, you know, throw any questions into that Q&A and, and uh, uh, we'll get those answered for you. I also want to make sure that we give a little bit of time at the end too, so we, we can go to a live Q&A if necessary. And as Scott mentioned, you know, I, I have been with Steelcase for um, quite some time. And basically my job at Steelcase is I get to work with people day in and day out. And I use angle, architectural anchors, just like what you see behind me, to really create inspiring spaces to where people can come to work and actually perform their absolute best. So my passion is not necessarily around what can we create, but really how the creation impacts the user. Um, because at Steelcase, we are a user-centric, um, human-centered um, uh, research company that happens to make wonderful furniture uh, to support the way that people work anywhere in, in any way how. So um, going through, um, if, you know, if anything that, that 2020 has absolutely taught us is that we know the future is completely uncertain, right? We, <laughs> if anybody would have looked back and said, hey, we would be here or we would have experienced the things that we did, um, I don't think anybody would have actually believed it. So we don't know where we're going to be in the coming months or even the coming years. You know, there could be mergers or acquisitions, which we've already started to see happen. Um, we could also have mass hirings, or we're really starting to see, you know, the talent wars right now that are taking place. And not sure if anybody has seen like the mass uh, resignation. Um, I, I saw that on um, LinkedIn. I think it was also on NPR. So how do you um, start to really adapt your space to, to bring your people back to the office to something better than what they may have remembered or what they've been experiencing for the past year. So adaptable architecture is all around that speed to reaction, uh, implementation and, and change. Um, and those that will experiment now will be in a much better place I think uh, down the road and they're gonna be in a better spot. And with adaptable architecture and flexible spaces, you have the assurance that your space will actually work harder for your, for your organization. Um, we're really starting to see uh, you know, people looking and organizations looking at like, how do they impact space to impact their, their, um, uh, their employees? So and that's what we're gonna dive into and that's what we're gonna talk about today. So space, honestly, it's never neutral. Um, you might think that it is, oh, we've done a lovely neutral palette. No, it's more than that. Space can either enable or it can hinder. And when you are looking at a space, you want to make sure that it enables the positive and hinders the negative because people's behaviors will emerge based on who and how they work. So I, I have a oh, question yeah. right off the dot about the space that you're in. Uh -huh. um, I've got a user that would like to know, is that a real plant wall? <laughs> You'll never know. Ah, the beauty of video. Um, so actually, it is not a real plant wall. So um, this is actually um, a facade of some sort. So they did put some, some material up to make it appear that it is real, but it is not. However, all other plants throughout the entire space are indeed real. <laughs> so. Well, it's, it's good enough to at least get someone asking. <laughs> and, 
And whoever asked that question, you're not the first person to ask that. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> um, so where I was saying here is that, you know, looking at this space, it might look great on paper or, you know, in a 3D rendering, but it's really around what are you doing with that space? So tapping into that a little bit and um, looking back at the past year and what it has taught us is that a little bit about steel cases, our sweet spot where we really, really, really perform well is we know what that sweet spot is between the intersection between science and human centeredness. And we can use space and leverage that to support what people need and what people want to, again, either enable the positive behaviors. And then that can also tie in too with, with the culture of, of a company as well. But things that we know with, with people that are coming back, and I should probably pre uh, preface this a little bit too, is that no matter where you are, you could already be back in the office because we do. We've got some clients that, hey, we're back 100%. We've been back. We've never left. Or we might have some that are like, nope, not going back until mm, we've heard a lot of September 5th. We've heard uh, sometime in the fall. We've heard terms of herd immunity. We've heard not until the first of the year. So people are all across the board. But we also have some organizations that know that there are certain teams that have to be together. They've got to be back. So when you're starting to bring people back, the five things that people need are safety and they need that belonging. They need to be productive. Um, they need comfort, right? Ergonomic uh, seating and, and height adjustable desks. And, you know, and then they also need that control over where and how they work, that choice, that control. And there's some, some definite macro shifts that we have seen over the, the course of the past 14, 15 months. Safety, again, number one priority in people coming back. Productivity, um, inspiration, and flexibility. You know, you think about it, it's like, hey, you know, we've had to compete with the sofa for the past year. So how are you going to get people to actually get out of their leisure wear? And, oh, just like what I did today, put on a pair of pants that has a button and a zipper on it and make a commute in. Um, so these are things that we've got to think about all at the same time while peppering in the design principles of the me within we, um, fixed to fluid. And these things I'm going to talk about as we get into applications and where you can actually see some true visuals. Um, open and enclosed uh, conferencing areas and collaboration spaces. And then one that has definitely been emerging is braiding that physical and the digital, you know, bringing people together, just like what we're doing right here, right now, of over, over digital and making it feel as real as, as possible. And space can support all that. So while you're looking at this and you're looking at this floor plan, you know, you might start to look into, well, what type of adaptable architecture is Stephanie even talking about when she's saying build this into these spaces? And, you know, and I'm going to get into these products in a little bit, but we've got a product called Thread that is an under carpet, uh, above floor, easy way of, of power system, of easy way to get it from the building out into those uh, middle of the floor plans to where you can start to activate that space because people are working completely different these days. They might not be shoulder to shoulder, you know, again, going back to like that psychological comfort and that safety, like I want to be around people, but I don't want to necessarily be right next to you, right? And then there's other places that you can start to bring in um, adaptable architecture. This is not just all about, hey, let's do um, cubicles or workstations or benching and open desks. But when you're looking at a floor plan, it's more than just walls. It is all about accessing that power, providing these spaces that um, will let your employees do the best work that they possibly can. So when you start to think about adaptable, uh, adaptive architecture, I want you to think about, okay, the words might come up of flexible, adaptable, change, um, easily moved, right? But it's also called modular walls, right? We, we might've heard this too. And modular walls, that starts to 
go into a different concept of, oh, well, these are movable and they're reconfigurable. But then there might be some of you on the, on the call here that are like, well, what's prefab construction? And prefab construction is basically the same thing as adaptive architecture and movable or modular walls or modular architecture. That these are just all products that are built in a factory and you bring them to site and they really support speed and ease and those construction schedules that you might have. Um, and another way to maybe think about about all of this as well too, is think of this as your smartphone, right? You've got the device, that's, that's prefab construction. That's something that's been adaptable and it's quick and it's easy. But how do you curate your phone is by adding apps. And that equates to modularity and adaptability and it's built to suit based off of how you work, right? So that is what we're going to be talking about today. And I'm going to, to give you a couple of reasons of like, well, why should we even consider this? First, speed and productivity. You know, we've got less people uh, on site. Um, it's able to be manufactured in a manufacturing facility. It comes in and you can put it up. It goes in, you know, after carpet, after the ceiling. So it really does help with that construction schedule. And a lot of times when we're doing furniture, we can do all of the adaptable architecture or modular walls or whatever right at the same time. So you get a nice fit and finish right at the end, right? Um, there's a better return on investment. So you can look at this product or, or these products kind of like furniture. So the depreciation on them is going to be um, you know, right around seven years versus the conventional uh, construction uh, that can be anywhere you know, upwards of 39. Safety and cleanability. Again, you know, this is product that can come in and you know, it's glass, it's steel, it can be clean. Um, we've got fewer people on site. We've got less dust and debris that might be going into the air putting um, a strain onto the HVAC, um, which by the way, if we tie back to safety, we're really hearing a whole lot around air quality um, with, with going into the, with going into, uh, I'm sorry, with bringing people back to work. Like, you know, it's all about that air quality. And it's funny because, you know, I've got my little air purifier with me that I travel with. <laughs> um, yes, I'm one of those folks. But needless to say, psychologically, I feel good about it. Um, also too, what does um, modular walls and architecture all have to do with sustainability? Well, it's good for the earth, right? This product should never have to go into a landfill. It's able to be um, reconfigured and reused and repurposed over and over again, whereas conventional drywall or other products to that nature, you know, if it's like, hey, I want to move this wall, well, guess what? I can move the wall. But with conventional, hey, I got to tear it down. And where does that go? It goes right into a landfill. And then lastly, it's a flexible asset. You know, we've got a great warranty on it. It is, um, we'll talk a little bit about a, a, a standard kit of parts and how do you design for this for the future around the smartest way uh, possible. But it's all developed with those long-term goals in mind, that it's not just a one and done. So if you think of this, right, we've got a, a, a lovely continuum of change, and we've all experienced that immensely um, over the past year and a half. And since March of, of 2020, Steelcase has been conducting a lot of research. We've had um, 11 plus primary studies in 11 different countries. We have talked to over 52,000 survey respondents and we've had different conversations with many of those people. We've even analyzed over 27,000 different floor plans, um, analyzed all for that return back to, to the office. But when you start to take all of that research and you keep that in mind, it, we can talk really about how does adaptive architecture really help create 
um, a changing, changing workplace and changing needs of businesses and teams and different individuals. So as we start to go through now, we're gonna see behaviors and we're gonna see applications and how everything that I just talked about applies to real life applications and ideas. Hey, so I'll pa pause right there for any questions okay. that might've popped up. Okay, so um, I've got a couple questions here. All right, let me read this first one. Um, okay, what, and and feel free to if if you're if you're going to talk about this later, you, you 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 can just address that later. I had a question: yeah. of What are some of the hindrances you steel case has seen in the work spaces over the last year that they are eager to change? Um, so that's one question that a user had. Wait, can you could you do me a favor? Could you repeat that again, please? Yeah, sure. What are some of the hindrances you slash steel case? have seen in workspaces over the last year, they are eager to change. Okay. Um, and when, when they, I, I wasn't sure if they're referring to uh, um, their companies, the companies that are out there or steel case, you know, but uh, maybe just address kind of we'll how, uh, how those, some of those spaces are changing and how adaptive architecture is, is, is part of that solution would, would be great. I'm sure you're talking about that. Number two is, um, this is a question for me, um, on your slides, have you started sharing any slides yet? Have I started yeah. sharing slides? presentation oh. slides? I, I, I couldn't tell whether you were, uh, whether you were sharing slides yet. Oh my gosh, I did not share a darn slide. Oh, stinker. What a blonde moment. But it sounded so good that. I don't think anyone could tell, but I knew when you started throwing out the, the 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 numbers of studies and stuff. You know what? There's probably a slide that goes along with this. Oh, dang it! Why didn't we start? Duh. Has, okay, has that popped up? Now we see it. Continuum of change. Well, great. I had good slides and everything. Oh well. All right, that's it. For question now. All right, sorry about that total blonde moment. And we even practiced that too. And obviously that did not work out very well. Oh, I have a, com I have a comment from somebody. They say, don't worry, sweetie, you're doing great. <laughs> hey, that, that's from us. I, that, maybe they were talking to me. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're talking to you though. Well, needless to say, what we just went through was um, was a lot of the research. So honestly, first couple of slides, um, no big deal, right? We'll get into the good stuff now. Now, if, if we need some meat, we got some meat. So um, regarding the hindrances, uh, some of the things that we've, we've definitely seen um, starting to creep up a little bit more is, um, the increasing tension between organizational leaders and employees. So um, we've got the leaders are like, we want people back, we need people back, and they know that they need to do something to get their people back. But there is a fine line uh, between, because there are quite a few employees that are like, hey, I've been working from home just fine. Why do I need to come back in? So I think that's gonna be um, an emerging tension uh, that is going to um, creep up a little bit more um, and come out a little bit more. But at the same time, you have to put yourself also too in like the employees' minds, uh, right? Of they know what they last saw in March of 2020. Right, Are they. If, if if you're able to impact that space and change it and make it different and make it better than what it was before, um, you know there there might be um, a, a way to get some people back in. The other thing that we're really hearing a lot about from people is that hey, you know, um, I know I need to do something with my space, right? I hear that from my employees, um, but they wanna work a little bit different because they now have video calls and this, that, the other, but they do wanna come back in. And 
what do we do with it? And oh, by the way, I don't have the budget to completely renovate a whole entire floor. So that's where we can kind of come in with like these low risk, um, high impact uh, areas that you can use adaptive architecture to now start to create a niche space. So for example, you know, like where I'm sitting right now, uh, I'm in a four by nine uh, via uh, room. And there's another room exactly like it beside me with some different furniture set up on the inside to where it supports that I need to be by myself because I'm doing a webinar with you all. But yet normally when I work, I sit right over there at a bench for four people that supports the local steel case team. So these close proximity uh, places, um, we're also seeing quite a bit uh, um, of individual focus spaces. So people have been working from home. They've been able to control the lighting, the temperature, the noise levels around them. So as they're coming back into the office, they're coming back into more than likely some sort of open floor plan. Um, just because we know where that, that pendulum was shifting uh, years ago, right? Over to that, you know, how many people can we get into a space? And as they're coming back in, where can I go to focus? Where can I go to just shut the world off for a little bit? Where can I go to, you know, maybe get away from Stephanie because she talks so dang loud? Right, so um, you, you need some of these places for respite, for focus, for a phone call because you know you're you're you know you got a phone call from the doctor or from you know your kid's school or whatnot. So really creating um, a variety of of places to support individual. And I've got a couple of slides that are coming up with that, but I see you pop back on Scott, so I take it there's a question. I had someone say they wanted to see the slides that you were going to show earlier. Okay. They didn't want to feel they didn't want to feel like they'd missed anything. I think. Okay. Perfect. So I will go right on back. Oh, awesome! Thank you. So there's slide one. Right. This is where we talked about everything being so uncertain. And then this is where uh, let's see. Can you see by any chance? Can you see the toolbar at the top? of my screen that I'm sharing. I want that to go away. Okay. So um, this was the floor plan that I was showing and talking through around the, the five things that people need, the macro shifts that we're seeing, and then the design principles that we'll be applying and showing through the, um, the thought starters and applications. And then these were just areas where we could probably talk about a little bit where I was on that continuum of change of like, where do you take these little niches and these spaces that you can now start to carve out and use adaptable architecture to create, you know, um, uh, a smaller space within a space by using, and I'll, I'll get through uh, the different products and, and really show those as opposed to just some, some colored parts on it. But really you wanna look at your floor plans and your floor plates holistically. Um, so, and, and we can do this to just about, you know, any, any floor plan that we're looking at. Um, and then also too, like I said, you know, now is a great time to really start experimenting, uh, a little bit too. You might have a couple of, I should go back here, but you might have a couple of teams that are like, Hey, I'll be your Huckleberry, you know, pick us and, you know, carve out an area of a floor plan and, you know, design it and experiment and pilot um, with that and see what works. And um, so that's where I was talking a little bit about, you know, what exactly is adaptive uh, architecture, modular walls, and here's where I started to get into that um, smartphone and app analogy of what prefab construction is and why you should absolutely consider it. Um, while we're going back through this, there was, this is great because there was one thing that I totally forgot about this is that when we talk about, you know, um, number two here, the return on investment and improved cash flow. One thing with Steelcase, we actually have our own financing um, division and we can actually do currently with, with approved buyers, 
um, 0% financing for 36 months. So when we start to think a little bit about what are these low risks, um, what can we potentially uh, do because you know, with, with a little bit of cash um, for a long-term investment, leasing might actually be um, a nice way to experiment and, and, and play around with that for, for the return to the office. And again, you know, because I am based in Phoenix and I cover five states, I cover Idaho, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, and New Mexico. Everybody, every market is at a different place in the return. Like I said, there are some people that, hey, we've never left the office. And then there are others that were like, you know, um, we're never going back. And then you have others that are like, how do we figure out what that, what that hybrid is? Um, and you'll probably hear a lot of that going forward too. One thing I can start to tell you too, I was talking a little bit about behaviors and culture. Um, and you all have probably experienced this in some way, shape or form. I know I have, is that there are definitely new user behaviors with, with the return to the office. Um, you know, one-on-one -on -one video, this is not going away. I, I really do not see it. Um, the great experiment of, of the pandemic has been, hey, you know what, guess what? Technology does work. Now, what do we do and how do we solve for that? You know, what, how, how do we build out a space? Um, highly controlled personal space is another behavior like at home. I mean, like I told you, I can control my lighting, my temperature, the, my noise levels and this and that. I have a height adjustable desk. I've got a good ergonomic chair. Um, so why would I go into the office, right? So you start to think about that a little bit. I can control some stuff. Your employees can do the same exact thing too. Um, different conversation streams uh, through various channels. I mean, you'll have text messaging going, you could have IM, you could have you know, your phone ringing, you've got things going on through video. I mean, there's just so many different ways to, to communicate now. Um, how, again, how do you support that? We all know that, that shifted, <laughs> shifted work hours, um, they're pretty much gone, right? It, it's no longer, hey, I'm gonna work eight to five, but it's kind of like the work-life balance has really, really combined um, itself. And working from home, it's kind of nice because I can go walk the dog when it's not 110 outside, but you know, um, you've got a little bit of more of that flexibility um, we also have, you know, that different, those different expectations of a flexible presence of, you know, hey, can you get on a video call? It's like, well, can we do a walk and talk instead? So there's different um, ideas on how to meet and how to collaborate. And then lastly is around that, you know, accessing that real-time data. Everybody has a personal device. Um, how are spaces being utilized? How, can I reserve a space? Uh, for facility managers, you know, you might be looking at like, well, how can I measure my space to make sure that people are using what I've done in? Um, so these are all behaviors that we now really have to have to plan for. And I don't know about you all, but I've experienced all of those just even this morning, <laughs> you know, and um, my workday pretty much started around 630. So but where does adaptable architecture come in? And this can really help your business, right? I told you about that space utilization and looking at your floor plan in a holistic manner and really taking a look at how to create like a destination office. Like whereas before, you know, the office was someplace that we had to go, but now it's a place that we, could go, or how do we make it a place that we want to go? Um, real estate is going to have to evolve quicker and faster. There's going to need to be protocols, and you know you're going to figure out, have to figure out places and, and spaces on how do you allow your teams to um, be comfortable and meet together, um, but yet still be safe and, and psychologically comfortable as well too. So in that long term. You know, we look at designing for that kit of parts. So today, you know, this, this space might be um, like two small huddle rooms and a private office and an open area. 
But down the road, if you plan for this smartly, you can now turn this into, all right, well, the two huddle rooms stay exactly is, but we're able to now turn it into an enclosed uh, area. So near term is, is really around, um, maybe around an open or even semi-enclosed uh, space to where we're using some post and beam, some um, acoustical, tiles and panels or screens for like some visual privacy and for some acoustical. Um, however, down the long term, down the road, it might be, hey, we, we can go back to, let's have a conference room and we can get six, eight, 10 people back in there. We need that to be closed up. Adaptable architecture allows you to do that. And this product, what we're showing here um, is just modular walls that have been added in. Looking at this too is architectural um, products also allow you to anchor the space, to give a feeling of permanence, not just, oh, hey, it was an afterthought. We threw some stuff up and you know, hopefully you feel good about the space. Come on in, employees. But this is really about how do you design something to give it that sense of permanence for right now um, where you can start to really create these open areas, but where a team can come together. And like we were showing in the picture here, we've got some monitors put in, you could add in a um, camera or two, and then you could really start to braid that physical and that digital. But everything in the space is also movable. So you could create this space into um, a variety of different ways. Stephanie, I have a I have somebody asking, what are the bowling pin looking things on the tables? The bowling pins. Ah, I mean, look like bowling pins. <laughs> no, those are not bowling pins. But thank you guys very much. Um, that is a product called Flex Mobile Power. It is a um, it's a product made by Anchor, designed by Steelcase. So we have partnered with uh, the world's leading battery uh, manufacturer. Uh, to create a product that can be pretty much mobilized anywhere within a space to um, <clears throat> power up laptops and tablets and other devices where power may not exist in the floor or you don't have cords across the floor for tripping hazards. So these are basically a great little way to activate and power up any um, power desert that you might have within within your space. We do use these in our office. They get used, we have a six pack and it gets used every single day. You can power a laptop for I think three days um, is how long these batteries last. And they're used all the time. We use, uh, you just have to have a laptop that has USB-C on it. And these, you just take easy way to get power when we're talking about, you know, spinning up a room, um, anywhere in the building, um, this is a great way to get power there. Absolutely. And if, any, if, if anyone wants to see these that are on the call, we do have these in our, uh, in our office if you want to actually see them in action. Excellent. I really want you to think about um, looking at every space as a uh, multimodal space, taking every, every area and looking at how can that space work harder and smarter for what my teams might do. Um, really flexible. Everything that you see here in the space is on, on wheels. We used a product called uh, Via um, Media Wall that will allow us to put, uh, bring power and lighting in. So then that way you've got a great place that you can start to really bring together that, that um, um, physical and that digital to create a lovely uh, experience for those um, that are at home or who knows where else they, they, they might be. And I can't get my laser pointer to stop working there. There we go. So how does Architectural uh, products, how do they support some teams? And this is how we get start to get some people back because we know that we've been competing with the couch. We've been competing with the kitchen table in our own office or the coffee shop or wherever. 
So these are some products and some thought starters on how do we start to inspire and compel people to come back in. And we want to look at it too from a variety of different postures and some different aesthetics. So in this area, you know, it's open. Uh, it, it's open. Um, they've got technology that is built in because you want to make sure that you're giving everybody the tools that they that they need to have. Um, and then there's also a different posture where they could either stand or they could perch on a stool. And then maybe there's a different way of creating like your own living room within, within your space. So we've got um, products to create the walls. We've got products that can go inside the room to really now start to carve out an area um, to where you know, it's, it, it's comfortable and where a small team could meet together in not just you know, a conference room that is a table and six chairs, a different way to look at it. And then the pandemic has really taken its toll on, on a lot of us. So how do we come back to where we can start to rebuild that, that social capital, rebuild a little bit of trust with our colleagues that we haven't seen in so long? So another way to do this, maybe without doing walls, is to build a space within a space. And this is using a product from um, Orange Box, their, Air, their AirPods. Yes, sir. I have someone asking, are, are you seeing modular walls in higher education? Yes, we are. Um, and actually, thank you, sir. Look, everybody, a flex mobile power. <laughs> um, the beauty of, you know, using a personal device to text a, a colleague, right? So this is the flex mobile power that you thought looked like a bowling pin. Uh, some people have called it a coffee carafe or, you know, uh, a kettlebell, but it has three USB-C ports um, and then also one USB-A uh, ports. And then that way you can literally take it and I could hook my phone right up to it and start charging right away. Speaking of higher education, we have Boise State. They purchased uh, the cart and uh, they purchased a cart and I think 12 uh, of these, I'm not sure which space they're using them in over there, uh, but they have told us that they uh, that the students love love them. Just a quick sidebar is that sometimes people will like, oh, well, that looks great. I would love to just take that, put it in my purse and take it home. But once it loses its charge, you can't just plug it into your normal, you know, wall socket. There is a proprietary plug. Yeah. They don't have those in the dorm rooms. <laughs> so yeah, keep those students from taking them. Um, so when you were talking about, are we seeing walls in higher education? Yes, we are. Um, we are seeing that into where they are creating different lab spaces. They might be creating different um, classrooms because, you know, classrooms kind of ebb and flow. Um, but other things that we are seeing too, just like what you see in this picture, is um, using via media wall and actually it's, it's kind of like furring out your existing drywall so then that way they can bring technology into the space it's completely concealed and covered and we can go we can span up to 20 feet long and it doesn't just have to be hey let me bring in um, um, technology we can also bring in different um, marker boards or blackboards or anything like that to really create and customize um, a space for that. So there's a variety of different ways um, in higher education. There's gonna be a product I'm gonna show you in a little bit that we that is just taking off in, in, in higher ed um, as well as K through 12. Um, other things to talk about, I, I talked to you a little bit about um, coming back into the office and you know, maybe there's too much uh, going on. We're really seeing an uptick in pods and individual pods or an individual film booth that um, to be peppered in throughout a space because we're hearing a lot of like, okay, I'm here, but there's not enough private spaces for me to just go take a phone call or take a breather or a video call, like go back to some of those user behaviors that, that I talked about. All the products here that I'm showing you um, really support that, that user and how we're all working. Um, other things to be considered about too is around proximity. 
even though I might say, hey, these pods are absolutely fantastic, but if you don't plan and don't put things in the right proximity or the right area, people won't use them. If you don't power them up, if you don't use you know, your flex mobile power, people won't use it. So you really have got to be thoughtful around, um, around that planning. And we've got 100,000 different thought starters and uh, people that are here that will just absolutely help you um, uh, with, that, with any of that planning. And then another way of using um, a product, this is called Post and Beam. This is a great way that you can um, create space within space without a ceiling, without tapping into um, sprinklers or HVAC or anything like that. But now you can start to really create in this area that you see here, there's like three different zones. Um, you've got one area here that is activated by using some sort of technology here with our Mediascape product. You've got marker boards. And then over here on this area, you've got a, a, another different collaboration space with a variety of different postures. And then on the flip side of that, you know, here's another zone. So, you know, you can take a small little footprint and make such a big impact with it. Um, and it's all modular too. So guess what? If this, if your needs change, you know, six months from now, this can change with you as well too. We've got some product here that um, has been torn down, reconfigured oh, four, five, six times over the past 10 years. And it still looks brand spanking new. It's excellent. So then um, other ways that adaptable architecture can um, support individuals. You know, now we're getting down to that, uh, down to the group or to the individual level here. Again, we've got, you know, pods that I talked about, um, but then there are also other ways. And I mean, this is something very similar to what I'm in of where you can create these different um, settings using modular wall and they all do not have to be cookie cutter. They do not have to be, here's a, you know, here's a phone room with a, a folding chair and a, a millwork surface. You can really make these comfortable. You can, you know, put a door on them for even um, more uh, privacy in that sense of it. So people can go find that flow. They can go do that individual work or, we really like to talk about choice and control and giving people, um, empowering people to work the way that they feel most comfortable with. And some people might not feel comfortable with going into a closed room, maybe because of airflow, or maybe your, your building doesn't support it or you can't do the, the HVAC with it. Well, this is a way that you can use modular walls, not put a door on it, and now you have that semi-enclosed, but yet people are still maybe by themselves, but yet they're still part of the team. They're not completely closed off. Um, so it's all around really supporting that, 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 that comfort level for, for your employees. Um, another product that is not shown pretty much throughout any of these spaces, and I've, I've talked about acoustics for quite a bit, is a product called sound masking. And it is um, a, a lovely way of where that is something that can be added easily into just about any existing space that will allow you to play either music or you can have some paging or you can have um, sound masking with it to help um, bring a little bit of, of noise into a space so that it's not silence is deafening or noise is overpowering. And for the person that asked the question um, regarding higher ed, this product that I'm showing on the screen here is a product called Thread. And we are seeing this take off tremendously in um, K through higher ed, all the way through. And again, this was that under carpet, above floor um, system, power system that lets you tap into that building and get power out uh, to anywhere, again, to activate those spaces. Um, we see it quite a bit with uh, K through 12 and, and higher ed, just because so many, you know, everybody has it, some sort of 
device. We've seen this with training rooms. We've seen this with classrooms um, and um, conference rooms and, and, and such even over into the corporate, even into, into healthcare, into some areas there. So it is not just an educational product, but it goes all across the board. And then lastly, um, is that, here's that sound masking. Um, it's just so hard to, to experience it with just seeing it on a slide. I know they have this product over at OEC. So if you ever wanna go in and experience what, what, what that sounds that? like, it's, um, I, I welcome you to, to go on over. Yes. If you'd like to see it in action, then uh, please be our guest. Just reach out and let me know, and we can we can arrange a uh, a demonstration. Absolutely. And lastly, we are really here to help. Um, we've got a variety of products that um, are anywhere from you know power to sound masking to complete floor to ceiling walls to other product that can be built in between um, to really hit a variety of, of needs and wants. And also we can plan all of this with you. So um, we are at the end of my slide deck. So I'm gonna open it up to any questions um, or any comments, or if there's anything else that you wanna see, I've got a lot of pictures and other things that um, I can tap into if you are, if you are uh, interested. Okay, great. Um, I had somebody ask a little bit ago, uh, can you give us an example of how you're using modular architecture uh, to address post-COVID concerns? And I think you've talked about a lot of those, but maybe share one, maybe share a specific that comes to mind. Yeah, so if you, let me see, let me pull this up real quick here. Um, bear with me, I'm going to pull up another picture of a couple of things here. Well, while I get into, get into that, um, we're seeing a lot of pods, for sure, um, just like what you see here, in terms of whether it's the phone booth or we're seeing even like some of the smaller pods for, for people to uh, break into uh, or break out to, I should say. Um, they really are looking for maybe some places that they can get away from people um, to just go basically an area of respite or to find their own, um, their own style for work, for focus or heads down. Okay, here's a question. Can you tell us more about the box with the louvered ceiling? I can. Um, that's what I was just talking about there too. And um, let's see here, hang on one second. I'm gonna pull up a couple of different pictures here. So the box with the louvered Uber, ceiling, let me go right here. Bear with me. Pull up another, some additional um, thought starters for you. So hang tight and share. Okay. I was hoping I'd be a little more fluid than this, but apparently I'm not. So um, can everybody see my screen here? Yes. Okay, so this product is called Orange Box. It's a air, they call it an Air 3. Um, there's four different sizes to it. So the lovely thing about this, and you can kind of see through the, through the pictures here, when somebody is inside the box, uh, inside the pod, the louvered ceiling will actually close, um, allowing for um, better acoustics, right? Because now you're starting to close it up. There is also a fan um, that will allow for air circulation in and out of the, of the spot itself. And it is completely freestanding. 
It should not need to be tied into um, sprinklers or HVAC or anything like that because of the louvered ceiling. And I was telling you that safety has been our number one priority. And um, what that means is that inside, you can kind of see it, there's a, there's a little heat sensor in there so that if in case of a fire or in case of anything like that, that will automatically open up the louver so then that way the building sprinklers can uh, sprinkle, uh, get that water in. Wonderful, thank you. Another question, what effective STC rating is achievable with modular systems to replicate the traditional hardwall office? Okay. So traditional hard wall, um, dry wall will be somewhere in the mid 30s, mid to higher 30s. Depending upon what product line that we use from Steelcase, we can be in the high 20s all the way up to 54. So um, there's a range. And of course, that will um, just depend upon what your needs are and you know, how high of an STC that you want to be. So for example, the room that I'm in right here, um, we can get up to a 54 using this product. Oh, well you answered, my next question was, can you tell us about the acoustics in the room you're in? It sounds really good. Yeah, so this is these, this room and the room right next door are probably the most utilized um, individual rooms uh, in, in the space here, uh, just for the fact of one, the size, two, proximity to the open floor plan, and three, the acoustics. The acoustics is really good. Um, when you are looking at it, or looking at acoustics or hearing acoustics or talking about it, you really want to look at it holistically. Um, you know, just because you look at it hey, from, a, from a wall's perspective, you also have to look at what is the ceiling like? What is the floor like? Um, so you want to take a look at the site conditions in the entire envelope. Um, so, I mean, I can tell you looking up, there's, we've got some pipes that are running through here. Um, so to help and look at this holistically, we do have, um, everything sealed up very, as, as tight as we possibly can, but we have also added in, uh, sound masking outside of the space because we don't really want the people that are standing out there to hear what we're talking about in here. So again, you want to look at it from, and we can always get into the ABCs of acoustics, but you want to look at absorption, you want to look at blocking, and then you want to look at coverage. And walls and is, is just one of those factors. Thank you, Stephanie. And to add, um, just from our dealership here in Boise, we had uh, ICCU, which is the largest bank in the state, they put in uh, rows and rows and rows of what Stephanie is sitting in, except with the difference being that it, the, the product was on the ceiling as well. So it, it, uh, it was a completely, in, in, and they, they use it for telebanking. So they do video banking in each of the booths and it's essentially like a soundproof room. They're, they're really great. Um, and they can have an entire floor of them and it's like everybody is sealed in their, uh, their own little office. And I don't know whether they have masking or not on the outside. I don't think it's, I don't think it's needed on the outside just because the entire room is built in the via wall, um, which is, is, is a really neat product. Okay. Yeah, there's there's, there's one, one room that we have here and it's kind of, let's see if I can point past the little bulb here. Um, that's their main conference room, and leaders will use that room all the time. Um, and what they've done there for some privacy issues from both visually and acoustically, um, they've used the same product via, um, but they wanted the light to be able to come in from, from outside because, you know, it's sunny 350 days a year here, it seems. Um, but what they did, they actually put Casper, which is a cloaking film, on the, the glass itself. So any, they, they can project anything, and people who are walking by cannot see what uh, is being projected. 
Um, and then we also have sound masking on the outside of the space, just in case if there is any sound uh, transmission, because you know, sound is like water. It, it, it's going to find a uh, the path of least resistance, whether it's through an outlet or a door or, you know, any type of little gap. So again, when I was looking at that and telling you to look at things holistically around acoustics, that's why. So they put the sound masking on the outside because that's where the ears are. And um, so in that way, if anybody's just standing outside, one, they can't see what's on the, on being projected and two, they can't hear it. I'm gonna. I'll. I'll uh, we're close enough to lunch time. We're four minutes away. Stephanie uh, did did a good job being on time, and we've answered several questions. If you have additional questions, uh, feel free to send those to me, and I can I can uh, forward them to Stephanie, um, and she can elaborate, or we can do uh, uh, a one on one session if you have you need to do a deep dive into any of the solutions that she talked about. Thank you so much, Stephanie. That was uh, that was really awesome. We will put the full, um, we recorded the session and have that available if you want to watch it. And I have a, uh, one last question here. Are you able to send out the slide deck? Um, are you able to share that slide deck with me, Stephanie? I can, yep. I will okay. get that over to you and we'll send it out as a PDF. Yep, if you send that to me, then we'll put a copy of the, we'll, we'll put a copy of the, the presentation and then the slide deck will be available to all participants. So thank you so much. Oh, hold on here, I have one more. Oh, okay, the AIA uh, certificate for credit. Um, so if you, uh, all you need to do on that, um, Nicole handles, Nicole handles that. Nicole, did you drop off already or are you still there? So I'm gonna have Some Nicole. Oh, you're here. Um, is there anything they need to do for the, um, for the CEU credit? They will need to email us their um, their member number, and then we can pass that on. Okay, perfect. So if you send that to n horton at oecworks.com, that's n h o r t o n at oecworks.com. Just send your it was the AIA number, right? Correct. Yeah, send your AIA number, and uh, we'll get uh, Nicole can help you get credit for that. Thank you so much, everyone, for attending. Have a great day. Bye, everybody. Thank you.